I get a lot of collapse here through my ankle. I am terrible at maintaining that tension in my calf and keeping that stiffness in my Achilles there. So what's up guys hope you've been enjoying the videos lately this is going to be a more in-depth scientific breakdown of the exercises i posted for improving ankle stiffness and improving sprint speed so i'm going to be going over the biomechanics and physiology of why these exercises are effective to help you implement them properly into your training so i actually made this video in response to some technical feedback i had on my own sprint technique way back when I made the acceleration video. It was the first video I uploaded. When I went back and actually looked at my own technique, I noticed that on my second step, my heel would really drop as I went to plant. And this is a huge strength deficiency that I believe causes me to lose a lot of power off of my second step. Because for us to really maximize our ground reaction force, to really maximize that power output into the ground to propel ourselves forward even faster, we need as much rigidity through our system as possible. So when we're trying to accelerate forward, but our ankle and our calf complex can't actually match the amount of force being produced by our hip and our knee extensors, instead of our foot continuing to propel us forward, it's actually moving back, causing us to decelerate. And while this only happens in a fraction of the second, when you multiply that by each step, leaking power on potentially every single plant through your acceleration phase, that's a lot of force we're losing between our start and our top speed. So not only do we need the decelerative and isometric strength when we strike the ground with our forefoot, we need to be able to concentrically push our foot down into the ground to propel ourselves into our next step. Having our heel drop on a plant when we're sprinting is really similar to the idea of losing extension through our thoracic spine when we're performing a clean. Obviously the goal with our Olympic lifts are to produce as much ground reaction force as possible in as short a time as possible. So high power output and we know that our torso is that connecting lever between our lower limb or our hips and our upper body which the barbell is ultimately attached through at the distal end through our arms so if our legs are driving us up and our torso is just keeping that rigidity to allow for that smooth acceleration and then suddenly our torso dips forward we're actually losing acceleration there because instead of our torso continuously lifting as our legs produce that force to the ground our torso is moving downwards or decelerating us so any loss of rigidity is giving us this massive power leakage. So these exercises are designed to one, decelerate and maintain an isometric position as we plant into the ground. Two, train that stretch shortening response and our concentric strength as we try and push and propel ourselves off the ground. And three, improve the viscoelastic properties within our Achilles tendon so that we can better create stiffness and potentially even dissipate less energy as we store that kinetic energy and release it into that step. Plyometrics are fairly well recognized in their ability to alter those mechanical properties of the muscle tendon complex and have been shown to increase muscle thickness, active muscle stiffness, joint stiffness, and some mixed results on uh, improving tendon stiffness. So to specifically target our foot and ankle strength, with these plyos i actually do want to be landing and taking off of the ball of my foot for the most part because this allows me to be continuously challenging that ankle complex and promoting that stiffness through the entirety of the set now obviously with normal landing mechanics we are going to start making contact as we land with the ball of our foot and then the rest of our foot will come down following for this drill i actually want you to focus on being on the ball of your foot the entire time so the stick is our starting point make sure you are coordinating your arms with this drill this is important for carryover into our actual running kinematics but as you can see as i land i'm stabilizing trying to stay on the ball of my foot here not the best shoes to wear for this exercise they're pretty cheap actually and really clunky so it looks like my heel is making a lot more contact than it is but make sure you're landing on the ball of your foot getting that stability and then going into your next jump to progress this you can increase hurdle height so you have to produce more force to get over and then obviously absorb more force on your landing. So with the bounce variation, we start to get more of a plyometric response because we're not only storing that kinetic energy, but now we're releasing it with that little bounce at the bottom. Now we know that when we do store kinetic energy, some of that energy is lost. This is known as hysteresis. And while little research actually supports the notion that plyometric training can improve hysteresis, we know that it does play a huge role in the stress shortening response. So training that stress shortening response and training that tendon stiffness is imperative 
for being really springing off the balls of your feet and maintaining that stiffness when you plant. Again, we can progress this by increasing hurdle height. However, it is important that you are able to keep your contact time relatively short and get into that bounce because we are losing the potentiation from that stretch shortening response the longer we're on the ground. For the reactive variation, we're just trying to get off the ground as quickly as we can and trying to keep our ground contact times as short as possible. Just like with the bounce, I'd rather you focus on decreasing your contact times before you try to increase the height of the hurdle. We need to be able to concentrically push ourselves off the ground when that stress shortening cycle comes into play so we can actually maximize our jump over that next hurdle. So for the stability stride, there is a lot of stabilizing that comes into play here. This is a surprisingly difficult exercise. We're trying to go through that stride movement while staying on the ball of our foot and challenging uh, that calf complex and your Achilles tendon in that isometric setting. And while from a definitive standpoint, stability and strength aren't actually the same thing, stability is largely based on the brain's collection of feedback from your sensory nerves, which in response then recruits whatever those muscles are needed to stabilize the joint. Strength often comes hand in hand in creating that joint stiffness so that we can actually produce movement and transmit higher forces. This is really going to challenge your foot strength a lot. People tend to forget how important foot strength really is. Every force that you produce through the ground is going through your ankle and foot yet people forget about their foot being an important part of actually efficiently transmitting force and producing movement through the ground if you wish to progress this further you can try doing it off of a stability pad it is pretty hard but i definitely recommend you trying it overcoming isometrics are awesome for a rapid but safe buildup of tension within the muscle and with this exercise we can really train that isometric strength into that push off that we see during our plant. Obviously we aren't actually moving here, but we're training that critical joint angle where we plant into the ground and then need to produce as much force as possible through our plantar flexors to maintain that rigidity and propel ourselves forward. And again, while this isn't isometric, it's gonna be great for improving that isometric strength because we are pushing as hard as possible. And people often forget that strength is both our foundation and our ceiling. We need a base level of strength to perform these movements, and then it's also our ceiling. That's our maximal amount of force that we could possibly produce. So while lifting a lot of heavy weight might not necessarily make you faster, it is going to increase that ceiling of that maximal level of activity. Now with speed, it's all about getting our rate of force development closer to that ceiling because ultimately it doesn't matter how fast we are if we never actually get there. So for us to actually overcome those forces, we have to have that foundation where we can decelerate and maintain that stiffness before we push through. And if we can more efficiently produce muscle stiffness, this creates a more solid anchor for our Achilles tendon to act off of. Because if that tendon is pulling onto a lax muscle, and that muscle can't actually maintain stiffness and starts to lengthen, we're losing power output because we can't maintain that rigidity through the movement. So you have to make sure that when you use this exercise, you're working at joint angles that are going to improve uh, your target performance variables. Now, I really like this heel elevated split squat. You're able to train that isometric strength at the ankle while also training the knee and hip extensors through the rest of the movement. So obviously your limiting variable here uh, when it comes to actually increasing load in this exercise is going to be your calf complex strength. So this is really good for exposing and training that limiting variable while unloading the primary agonist in the movement. So if you have someone that's potentially recovering from a quad strain, you could use this exercise to improve their ankle stiffness without actually overloading their quad, which is still recovering. And again, this is really going to challenge your foot strength. So make sure you have someone watch you do this exercise so you're not dropping your heel every time you push yourself up to the top of the movement. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope this was a little more informative as to why we perform these exercises. Please, please, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if there's anything you want me to discuss in the future. And remember, this is real life. We're just trying to perform.